I'm Luis Sorini, and uh, there is my colleague Susanna Albertini and uh, uh, Selena Marinelli that is also with us. So we will be the webinar facilitator. There will be some uh, presentation by, by Susanna and then uh, uh, we'll come up with some uh, case studies and then we would like to, to have you on uh, doing something, okay? So uh, I pass the ball to Susanna and uh, the floor is yours, Susan. Okay, so I would like, uh, thanks for being here. And I think that we are increasing a little bit and uh, we will have fun in any case and we will discover many things as we also learned and discovered while preparing this uh, presentation. So we want to start from uh, one, uh, let's say, uh, good ambassador of uh, science and of change in general. And uh, you know that this guy uh, learned to write uh, around nine years and he started to speak at six. So before uh, apparently he was just using his uh, visual uh, uh, thinking or visual Im imagination. So we thought he was a very good example and testimonial. And one of uh, his sentence was exactly this. I don't really understand something unless I can explain it to my grandmother. And then if I can picture I can understand it. So this is a start of this uh, adventure. And uh, basically what we want to uh, try to convey and to discuss with you is that when we plan and deliver our thoughts, but also feeling concepts or ideas, uh, often we face uh, three challenges mainly. The first one is to structure our ideas in a way that we as the first, uh, let's say, uh, people in contact with this concept understand, but also someone else, like for instance, our team in that we can uh, I mean, work with and uh, co-create something, or when we have to go outside and so to attract and communicate with someone else externally, we need to really carefully put in place a number of uh, visual thinking activities. Basically, this is how the brain works. The brain works mainly in a very, let's say, simplistic way in three, uh, has uh, three dimensions of uh, collecting information through what we hear, uh, so words, sound, melody, uh, through our interaction with the environment, physical interaction. And in this, uh, uh, let's say, macro world, uh, we also have, uh, for instance, the experiential learning, but also um, even what we, when we touch, when we uh, also uh, taste something, we, we good something. But also, and this is the place where we want to uh, go deepen, is the visual uh, spatial uh, in assess or that is uh, through our eyes, but also through our minds. As you know, the brain is basically divided into uh, hemispheres and one is more related uh, to, let's say, the, the um, uh, writing, logic, cri critical thinking, but also uh, reasoning and number. And this is the left side. So the people that are dominant in this are typically uh, very strong in this dimension, while there is the right brain dominance that, are, that is typical to the people that are very creative and uh, uh, also artists. They, create music, appreciate art, and as are also innovative. Of course, there's not a, a segmentation, a strict segmentation, but all of us, we use some, some parts of our brain for some tasks and some other for other tasks. And in, in what we would like to do with this exercise is to really try to make better bridges between the two sides and so really become more, uh, let's say, performant in, uh, in the right side of our brain. As you see here, uh, this is a neurological activation of areas, depending on the type of information that we are getting, if it is uh, visual, the first line, and if it is verbal. As you can see, the visual act activates much more neurons. But if you imagine to have uh, the 
uh, both, I mean, both activation contemporary, like for instance, now you are hearing my voice and you are looking to the presentation, this will have uh, basically two main outcomes. The first outcomes is that we will activate much more um, parts of our brains. And this has these two consequences. The first one is that you will learn more, you will comprehend more. And the second is that you will retain more. So you will remember much more compared to the simple uh, voice. Uh, as you know, from the very, very beginning, I mean, it's just a few years in terms of evolution that we are using words. Before we were just using images or symbols. The first uh, um, alphabet was uh, uh, using images and therefore our brain and particularly the, 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 let's say, older parts of our brain are still thinking by images. So what is the visual thinking? Visual thinking was uh, structured and defined with this uh, name in uh, six, uh, 1969 uh, by this guy that is a German uh, psychologist, but also expert in art. And he was, uh, uh, let's say, balancing the two dimensions, psychology and art, because he believes that art is the, is the most natural way of understanding the world. Of course, this uh, theory had a lot of evolutions and now um, there are there are several of course uh, uh, ideas on the ground and we tried to, to put some of them in the same uh, place in the same presentation uh, first of all some statistical data um, 60 to 65 of the general population use uh, visual thinking less than 30% strongly use visual thinking. So typically the artists or the people that are, uh, for instance, even the storytellers, those people that are using it a lot. In part because they are born in this way, in part because they are getting used and they are uh, using these techniques. 45% percent is using both a uh, way of thinking and 25 percent apparently uses exclusively words. Visual thinking is a mental process basically that uses visual processing capabilities of our mind. So I would like from you if you believe that you are a visual thinker or not. Anyone would like to answer? Are you? Luis, you cannot answer because you are a graphic designer, so. <laughs> Serena, yes, this I think that this is, yes, I am. Someone yes, that is uh, not, Alina also. Who wants to speak? Probably not. <laughs> you are not okay maybe i will because, make you change you your mind yeah. let's see uh, mirko because you come from uh, from what background i mean it's more uh, like programming or something like that it's it's economy and programming it's Sorry? economy it's economy and programming so uh, so in that mm -hmm. sense i i'm an economist that uh, that is involved in software development so i i think that i that i work in numbers and a logic and have a, I, I would say, analytical mind, yeah. So sure. you will find out that actually you are a visual thinker. <laughs> you will see in the presentation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, keep on uh, our story. So, and indeed uh, several people think that uh, this is a, a typical talent of uh, graphic designers, artists, paint, painters, or musicians. But now we would like to destroy this stereotype in the next uh, slides. So let's start from, uh, let's, let's analyze some dimension of visual thinking. For instance, visual perception. So what do you see in the picture? You simply see two hands or you see a heart, you see some, you have emotional feelings like a romantic uh, moment. If you interpret this picture in this way, like I guess, you have at least one dimension of visual thinking because this is really the ability of our brain to receive, interpret, and act upon visual stimuli. 
The second dimension is the situational awareness. And this is uh, uh, basically what helped us in the past to survive. So the ability to take a picture of the environment, understand what are the environmental elements and events with respect of time and space, comprehend, comprehend and then act accordingly. In the picture you see, I don't know if you have, I have the, the pictures of the people uh, on, on top, but in this picture there is a big wave that is nearly killing this guy. So of course we have an alert message or another example is when you are about to enter in your bank and you see someone with a gun in his hand, of course you will not enter the bank and probably you will run calling the police. Another dimension is the visual memory. I mean, the, the possibility to recall memories from the past in form of images or in form of even uh, situations, scenes, uh, videos of the memory. There are people that are able even to read a book simply uh, using uh, the, the visual memory. And also consider that the people that are uh, those um, Guinness uh, uh, world uh, records that are uh, remembering large number, lar large uh, number of uh, items of uh, words, they use visualization. So they create images in which there are different elements, but visual to recall numbers or words. Recognition, okay. What is this? The first one? Superman. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I guess uh, maybe in any case, this is, uh, of course, you know, that is Batman. Uh, you all know that, oops, that this is not a fruit shop. You all know that this is not a, a, an association uh, protecting birds. And then you have also symbols that are already part of our uh, daily interfaces, even here, when I have to activate and disactivate my audio, I'm using this icon. And then everybody knows that this is uh, the Wi-Fi. So all the icons are visual way of interpreting the, the um, reality and they are, they can be, uh, let's say, natural or artificial, for instance, those ones are, have been created in the last few years. And then another dimension of the visual thinking is the visualization. For instance, when, a, when someone tells you a story, your brain cannot prevent to start creating images. Uh, or when you are reading. Um, and this is something that we, we learn when we are very, very young and, and is a way of uh, visualize something that doesn't exist apart in our mind. This is why I, I, I was saying that could be real or mental images. And the same applies to dreams. Dreams are highly visual, full of colors, shapes, movements. Nobody dreams in words. And also the visual uh, learning is very, very connected with the visual communication because of course the communicators are using the visual learning and visual thinking to communicate. So uh, it, here you can see the, the um, poison writing, but if we didn't have the poison writing, we could also know that this is something that we don't have to drink. Uh, basically, and uh, the use of visual thinking can be used to communicate, com convey, or convince. Susanna, yes? can you allow me to tell a, a quick joke just to, to make it more interactive? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, excuse me. Okay. Uh, if I can share a little story. I yes, sure. The, the Absolutely. So, so it's actually a joke, and uh, a Polish guy got married to uh, an American woman and she moved, uh, he moved there and then just a week after the marriage, he asked for a divorce. And then when he talked to the lawyer and said, well, uh, I need to divorce because my wife wants to kill me. And how do you know that she wants to kill you? And then the Polish guy said, well, I found a bottle of poison in the bathroom that wrote 
Polish remover. <laughs> so uh, he misunderstood the bottle's uh, <laughs> visual to something else. <laughs> Funny. Susanna, you are muted. Uh, some of you already know us, and uh, you know that we really like to have uh, this type of uh, sharing and this type of uh, uh, intervention. So if you want to say something, I cannot uh, see you, but Luis, maybe you can follow the, the fingers and tell me if someone would like to intervene, or otherwise you intervene. We are not a lot, so we can do it. Um, another dimension of the visual thinking is the spatial memory. And this means the ability to remember uh, logis information about uh, space without verbal information. So for instance, when you walk from your home to the office, you don't have to have indication. You remember and your body is able to go in one direction or in another. And then I don't know if you know who is uh, this artist. Someone recognize him? MC. Yes, exactly. And uh, I just uh, uh, visit his um, exhibition that is all, uh, all around uh, Italy. And uh, he's an artist that is typically using metaphoric abstraction to communicate, but he's also using uh, the contradiction and uh, the um, really um, misleading between the, uh, an image and, and the consequence. Like for instance, you see here that there is this little boy that is eating the snow and is a very nice and happy and um, I mean, image that bring us to the to the our our first years, but then if you turn the corner because it's done in a corner, you see that the origin of the snow is not really snow, but is uh, some rubbish that is burned. And the other the other image that is very famous is this guy that is launching a bomb. The physical attitude is the launching a bomb, but indeed is launching flowers. So you can also use this uh, kind of mental and cognitive contradiction to make your message stronger when you are using a visual communication. And the, the last dimension is uh, simulation. So the ability, and this is ability is very typical of the people that are play uh, chess, to imagine fictive scenarios in a very detailed and maybe also very long uh, process to pre prevent, predict what will happen and to act uh, as a consequence. So now I would like to, to ask again to Mirko if uh, he still believes that he's not a visual thinker. No, I, I am a visual thinker, if you put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we found very interesting while uh, studying this, uh, all these elements and preparing this presentation, because this is uh, something really informative and interesting to learn how visual thinking is part of our day and night also. But now what we want to do is to better exploit this for our work. And, and then as we, we already imagined, we can use uh, visual thinking to see so to be able to really see the, the world in a different way, to explore, to comprehend, to share with the other, and also to explain new idea, ideas and information. We, also, uh, we, we can also use this technique to convey complex ideas in a more simple way, and then uh, to make the things more clear, so to facilitate the understanding of complexity. Uh, Luis, do we want to see the chat if there is uh, some messages? I see that. There is a message from Ajevromic that is saying, I can't, Im I can't imagine how it is to be a visual thing <laughs> with a smile. So um... uh, now, now I think you have some more information, but yeah. now let's see really how to use these uh, techniques and this ability. So visual thinking can help us in uh, transforming what is in the sky, what is in intangible in something that is in the ground. 
so it's tangible. And this can be done through an iterative process. So we take things, we bring them down, we refine, we bring them back and forth for several times. And we can do it alone, or we can do it as we already uh, have seen, alone with our team or with someone else. And there is a, we, we prepared a, a list of uh, some examples of um, areas in which you can really use this technique to uh, work better and to facilitate your activities. And we would like now to go into detail of uh, some of them. So the first one is uh, uh, really simplify the complexity. So typically, in, in any project, in any idea, but also when you are studying or when you are analyzing something new, thoughts, feeling, concepts, ideas, words, you face a, a wide, a big complexity. And then you have to make a selection among this uh, um, huge amount of data and to find what are the relevant information. Uh, a few years ago, we did a, a project working with intelligence analysts, and they we discovered a lot of uh, interesting information, including the role of cognitive biases, for instance, in in the complexity, in understanding the complexity. And also, uh, we, we tried to work with them to understand how, because imagine they have a, a a, a huge amount of data. And although most of the data are processed by um, the computers, some of them should be processed by the people. And they were very, I mean, they, they always pointed out the example on the fact that on the 11th of uh, September, they already knew all the information, but they were not able to pick the right information among, among this big data. And, and then we can also, in this case, use visual metaphors to simplify and explain concept. Here, there is this uh, example of uh, big data. Uh, big data can be structured when we want to uh, try to visualize how they work in, in the way uh, that is represented here in this uh, sticky note. So starting from one to many and then to many again. Also, this applies, for instance, to the, um, I mean, to, to many, to many structures. But if you turn upside down this this image, you see that is is a tree basically. So all this information can fall down from a tree, and and, and you so you can use metaphoric visualization to really easy the complexity and and simplify it. Another uh, good way to use visual thinking is to structure the ideas because you can uh, put some dimension and you will see them in the next presentation in a meaningful way. You can organize logically your ideas and projects, uh, put in some dimensions like, for instance, uh, what, how, uh, to whom, when, some dimension. And you can also use other type of canvas, like for instance, the what canvas, that will help you to identify what are the strength, weakness, opportunities, and trends. So, I'm put sure, Susanna, that Mirko now is um, recognizing me as a visual thinking when he sees this. Correct? This slide. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely, I do because, uh, in a, in a, in a sense, I'm using, uh, I'm, I'm presenting ideas in a logical way and. Uh, yeah, I play saxophone as well. I support this. Support this. <laughs> <laughs> Visual thinker, yeah. <laughs> Good. So another way to use it is to plan and strategize. So when you want to, to define a plan, of course, you need to uh, identify what are the most important information, of course, but then you have to define a priority and then you have to take a decision. So for instance, visualize all these elements uh, like uh, the, the famous pros and cons list in which in a certain point, you realize that you have one pros and 20 cons or vice versa, and then you, you, you visualize your decision. And of course, this helps you also in reducing the overwhelming. So the sensation of being uh, overwhelmed by things to do, to make an example. Um, and then, of course, uh, uh, learn. Learning is a process uh, in which uh, visual thinking can help you. The simple uh, um, highlighting some pieces some words when you are studying something is a way of highlighting those uh, 
words out of a total, a big amount of words. And this is a way to visualize. Or for instance, um, you know that images are processed in a, in a very quick way compared to, um, to the text, like we said before. Now, so if you put an image, you can really create an emotion or you can also help your, your audience to retain the information and also to consolidate the learning. And this is a, an interesting um, study about the fact that after three days, just a 10% of the information that you received through uh, text are uh, retained, while 65% of the information are retained if they enter your brain through images. Visual thinking can also be used in teams because when you want to improve your creative uh, thinking skills and connect also the people with their creative side, you can use uh, tools uh, online, offline. You can use uh, even artistic uh, ways of putting together ideas and to facilitate discussion around ideas and innovation, but also discovering alternative thinking patterns. This is, is always interesting when we do co-creation because we realize that the same, the same concept can be really reached in different ways. And then of course, inject new ideas in the process. When you, when you go out, when you have to speak with someone else, of course you need to spark their imagination. You really need to, bring them in your side uh, because you want to use the, the creative uh, intelligence or you want, for instance, uh, start uh, developing a creative uh, thinking process in your audience, particularly imagine when you're doing focus group and you want to collect information about your products to make an example. And then you want to create emotional connection with your audience because this will help you in doing what you want to do if you want to convince if they are investors or if they are of if you are selling something Susanna, sorry i yep. interrupt you because there is james that is writing a thing so i would like that you bring this up he's saying that he was when he was going to school uh, he used to take text james can you can you explain this to us yes <laughs> um yeah i always found that if i would just read the textbooks um, I would only retain maybe 50% or whatever. And so I don't know if someone taught me this or I just learned it myself, but I found if I would read and then write it into my notebook, you know, yep. and um, I would, you know, be able to, you know, remember maybe 75% or something like that. And then, <clears throat> you know, when I'm, um, when I started working, I remember there was uh, an engineer in the office where I was working first, and he had, you know, his, he had textbooks there. It was uh, an engineering um, job. And, and I noticed all of his textbooks had, with a regular pen, um, you know, blue ink or black ink, he had all, you know, many of the lines underlined. Like it wasn't even, you know, uh, yellow highlight pens or anything. And I asked him, you know, what, why did you do that to your books? So he explained to me, he said, well, if I read these textbooks um, and I just underline them with my pen, I can retain, you know, 75, 80% of what I'm reading. So it was a little bit similar to what I had been doing, you know, except I had been writing it, which takes a heck of a lot longer. He was literally like just going along with a, a pen as he was reading and he claimed he was retaining it more. So, so you know, perhaps this is uh, another example that somehow, you know, just the, you know, going from the hand to the brain to the eyes, you know, it's sort of making a bit more visual. Well, of course, I think James, the process of uh, of uh, uh, let's say listening to I don't know a professor and or reading something and. Uh, and uh, underline, you know, the important thing is more difficult that different than uh, uh, getting this uh, information process in your mind and and put down as drawing. So this is a little more, you know, complex, but can simplify at the end. So I think this was um, is not easy for sure. You know, a, a lot of people 
because we, we, we were born writing, basically, you know, in, also mm. in the high school, uh, they, they taught us basically to, uh, to write down, to write, write, write. And while uh, the visual part is, is not that, uh, was not that uh, uh, deep in the schools, I think. So that's why this process of getting, transforming and put it down as, I don't know, uh, you know, a sketch uh, mm. is, is more difficult probably. Yes, we are not used. We are typically uh, more, I mean, the school are very connected to the words. But in any case, even uh, re, I mean, more times the information get enters from different pathways. So writing, uh, taking notes, uh, sketching, uh, more, more your brain retains, of course, because there are different elaborations uh, uh, consequent. Uh, there is a I think there is, a, yes, a Serena that put um, a video that we will uh, see later on. So thanks a lot. If you have also contribution ideas, please put them that we will be able to incorporate uh, as uh, maybe we will make a, a final image with all these links that we can uh, suggest to other people that will see the registration. So thanks a lot. Uh, very well connected with the visual thinking, there is uh, the storytelling because you know that our brain operates in pictures and when we hear a story, we Im imagine something. And this is the reason why, for instance, the TEDx presentation are typically using the stories because stories are easy to remember. They make uh, your presentation more personal, particularly if the story is your story, and then they create the emotional flow. I don't want to go into detail with this question of the flow, but the flow is a state of mind in which you feel very comfortable also when you are playing video games, to make an example. But in the story, you enter and you feel kind of in, and this is what you have to create uh, in order to pop up uh, during your presentation when, for instance, there are pitches competition in which after the third, the fourth, uh, that the investors start to make a confusion. So if you need to pop up, use uh, stories or images. And then the next is uh, visual, uh, of course, uh, visual communication is part of the visual thinking because it transforms the visual uh, thinking into visual elements. Uh, do you know what is this? I guess most of you know. These animals. <laughs> neurons. <laughs> it's exactly. a neural network. Exactly. Exactly. It's the neuronal uh, network. And uh, this is how our, our brain is done. That seems a uh, little strange. But then it's funny to see that most of the mind maps are created in this way because we have uh, connections, we have uh, topics like here, the topics are connected to other topics. So when we do maps, mind maps, basically we replicate our the, the way our brain is structured. And, and then this is, the, this is the reason why uh, mind maps facilitate structuring the flow of ideas, uh, thoughts and opinions. And then they make a connection by linking different concepts, like basically what we do when we think. And this is one of the most interesting supporting tools, the mind maps. There are um, a lot of templates online. You can do your own uh, mind map. It's very useful also when you have some uh, difficulties like uh, for dyslexic people or for autistic people, because of course, they really support the, the connection when they are kind of broken somehow. Another good example, we were, we were again uh, touching the individual dimension, then the team dimension. The share boards are a very good uh, way to elicit and structure visually team creativity and co-creation. This is an example of an activity that we did in the Miro board that is very effective. And you can see that there are many uh, attributes also, Luis will, uh, will touch those attributes uh, uh, later on. Um, but basically the way you organize uh, words basically in a co-creative exercise can be multiple. You can use uh, arrows, you can use different shapes, you can use different colors, you can put things together. And this is a very good example of 
structuring visually uh, the result of a co-creation exercise. Flow charts uh, that are kind of complex. This was, uh, we, we wanted to bring you a real example. This is a explanation of uh, uh, the value chain of a project in which we are communication leader that is about uh, creating bioplastics from uh, industrial uh, feedstocks, industrial waste. And this was really complex because imagine that this is the summary of more than 100 pages. So we have this uh, total image that is very easy to be used when you have to explain the different steps and the consequences of the different steps. And then also to avoid the miscommunication and errors when you are uh, speaking to someone else. Uh, the presentation slides are very typical. And here I, I took a very bad example on uh, what you shouldn't do. So to put too many information in your slide, but rather try to be to use less text uh, to maybe use also existing templates to try to be consistent with the colors, uh, with the images to try to, again, create this flow and respect it because uh, when you are uh, kind of uh, relaxed and in a flow, you again retain much more the information. And, and I'm nearly done with these uh, other visual elements you have to take into consideration are, for instance, the settings. So these are examples of uh, <laughs> bad settings, especially now when we are online, we really need to take care of what we have on our back and also and this is very typical from us as Italians, the body language and hand movements. Luis, do you want to touch uh, this yes, dimension? This, uh, there is James that is coming up with another interesting point. Uh, James, go ahead. Yes, just uh, you mentioned earlier about um, the techniques for you know, making things into images and you can recall them easier. But I've all, I've often you know thought about you know trying this and I've 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 seen you know some TV programs I think that were were doing it. But um, so for example, those people that can remember many many names of people in the audience and what the technique that they use is they um, they'll take the the name what the person looks like or some article of clothing they're wearing and then they they remember the name that way but i'm always wondering how can they you know how can they process that so quickly and it would seem to me to be more things to remember you know to be able to bring it back again so it always puzzled me you know um because they have to remember something about you know the way the person's eyeglasses for example maybe and then turn that into you know the name of the person so that when the when the when they look at that person again they'll remember okay they have these you know round eye glasses so you know their name is robert because it begins with the letter r or o you know or something something like that do you, do you know what i mean but it, it the question i have is how do they do it so quickly you know you would you would think it would actually be more difficult to do it that way because there's more things to consider than just root remembering the person's name and what they look like. Probably, I think that in, in any case, it depends on the people. And of course, uh, uh, those people already experimented several times these techniques. Mm -hmm. And they really have an image. Once I, I heard an interview about this guy that was able to remember, I don't remember how many sequence of numbers, so mm -hmm. with no clues at, at all. And they were using images. So for instance, a cat is six, a dog is seven. And so they were creating images in which the dog was following the cat and the cat was following a mouse and the mouse was jumping on the roof. Uh, so this type of uh, mm -hmm. things they use, This, uh, at least this interview that we heard, but again, there are people, I had a, a friend of mine when I was at university, she was reading, I, I'm not kidding, she was taking picture with her brain of uh, our books and she was reading during the, she was reading with the eyes like that. 
So mm. she didn't have to memorize. She was simply reading. Mirko, you have uh, your hand raised. Your hand up, please. Yes. Um, well, I can. I think I can answer that. I did some research in the past. Um, um, to James regarding the question, I think uh, no. The reason why uh, um, memorizing more helps to uh, uh, we uh, we call it faster is that we have an in uh, there is an uh, unlimited capacity to remember things that we have in our long term memory. For example, we are capable of learning two or three languages. The problem is that there is a bottleneck of the uh, of the of the perception in learning. You cannot learn all day without clogging up. It's not that it doesn't fit in your head, but it's not processed. And that is the answer. If you want to remember a face, um, I cannot remember names, but I can very well remember faces. So um, the Romans who had less writing material had a method, and I can, uh, sorry for taking a bit long to get to the point, they had a method called the Loki method. They would remember 10 things in a row by having a pass through an area they know. For example, if you want to remember that you have to go to the store by four things, three is relatively easy. If it's four or five, you will be in the store and you will have entirely forgotten what it should be. So what you remember is that you go down the stair in your home, which you know very well, and you want to buy eggs, flour, water, and say um, the cleansing stuff for the dishes. Hard to remember if you don't do anything because you have it now, but it will be difficult if you in half an hour because it's gone from your memory. So what you do is uh, you recall a story that you fall down the stairs, that you juggling with the eggs, they fall down, they splash into the water, they mix with the detergent and it's a mess and so on. And by remembering more, you are bringing this story because it's visual, that's the point about it, and here we are back in the seminar, um, because it's visual, you will be in the score half an hour later, and you will remember it. Okay, that, yeah, that's excellent. Thank, thank you, Mirko. So we're going back to storytelling, basically. <laughs> yes. Mirko. Yeah, uh, I, I would definitely approve that. That that's a that's a way to remember to remember things, and and telling stories is always a compelling way to uh, make these visuals in another's mind. So uh, I guess that's visual thinking. <laughs> exactly, and, and when you have to convince someone else, and particularly really when you want someone to remember you among a plethora of people that are doing similar things to you, a pitch in front of investors. This is a typical example. If you want to stand up, the storytelling should, could be a way, could be a real nice way because you, you will stick. <laughs> now we will remember for years this story about this guy that is falling down the stairs, Mirko. Because, and we will remember you that are linked to this story. So this is a very good example of what we you, were. If you also can add another element, another ingredient that is the interaction with, uh, with the audience. So if you're telling a story, you stop in a certain point and you pose a question and wait for the answer. And then you start to interact and, and tell them something. And then you keep going on your story. This is even, better because you know they will remember you for sure on that point that you ask the question so this is another point i would uh, like to add i would like to add very shortly something that is important um the more hilarious the story is like uncommon the easier the brain will remember i give two examples and then you will remember for the rest of your life i'm learning spanish and I, I use this login method to remember certain words. One example, the Spanish word for um, belt is uh, cinturon. So uh, I remember it strangely with centurio, which is a Roman soldier. So at a certain spot, there's a huge Roman soldier standing, and I have it in my visual map. And when I see the centurion, I know that cinturon is a Spanish word for belt. That's how it works. 
The other thing is uh, uh, juntos means together. And what I have is two uh, South American generals who are arm in arm, they are together because they are a junta. That is uh, the word like uh, people, you know, working together. So South American generals is juntos means together. So now you learn two words of Spanish. Cinturón y juntos. Gracias. <laughs> In nada. <laughs> Okay, Luis, so now uh, we... So now from the graphical design point of view, I'm the background, my background is graphic design. So uh, we are talking now about the visual elements uh, when you have to you know, communicate something. So the first one is the canvas. And basically the canvas means uh, how you structure your uh, communication and your presentation. You know, if you want to put a, you know, everything in one single place, if you want to divide by you know, different... Uh, other areas. Um, the next one is, okay, shapes. Uh, well, I put here triangle, circle, and, uh, and square, but of course there are more, hand shape are the best one. You know, you can uh, really create stars, so you can just make uh, circles as you like, uh, or different uh, type of, uh, of uh, shapes. Then the text, of course, the text is important because you know visual thinking doesn't mean just visual. You know, you put visual, but you add text. But of course, please try to summarize the text. So don't put uh, hundreds of words for a single, you know, uh, shape or image. But just try to summarize as much as you can to be, uh, let's say, um, uh, clarified by the visual. Okay. The next one is uh, lines. Lines is very important. These are connectors. So you can connect the things. You can connect shapes, you can connect the text. Uh, and this is very important to structure your, uh, your uh, presentation. The next one is, <laughs> Susanna has problems <laughs> with moving to, <laughs> to the next one. Icons, well, icons, you can find a lot of them. I'll give you a tip, just go on Google put whatever you want to look and put icon and go on the images and you will find a bunch of icons. And this will give you also uh, some input. Oh, this is what I can use for, you know, to try to simplify this concept, okay? So this is very important. And then of course, picture. Pixabay is a free place where you can find fantastic images. This image that you see here in this presentation is taken from Pixabay. And, uh, or Pexels is another one where you can find also free videos. So just go there, write what you are looking for and, uh, and your visual thinking will start to move because if you put uh, uh, whatever you like, I don't know, trust, and you see some images, then you say, ah, these images, you know, it's good for trust because, you know, this means this, this, and that. So this is very important. The next point are the visual attributes. So basically the first one are the colors. So please, when you do a presentation, don't put the red for yes and don't put the green for no, because a lot of people do this. Confirmation is not red. Red is not confirmation, remember. And then also how you want to combine the colors. You can have gradients. For example, if I'm doing a presentation about medical, for example, I will use bluish, greenish, colors, or if I want to talk about uh, uh, nature, I will add maybe to green and bluish also orange, yellow, and this is, so the combination of colors, but the colors can be also used uh, to combine different ideas. For example, ideas of a certain type, I would use blue, other type I would use yellow and so on. Next one, a scale. So uh, when you scale, uh, a shape, a text or whatever, you give importance to that shape, okay? So if it's big, means it's the main, and if they are smaller, then are maybe branches of the first one, okay? So scale is very important also on the, on the creation of visual thinking and visual presentation. Proximity is another important thing. You can group things, and I'm sure Mirko knows how to do that when he makes uh, the structures, you know, where to put things uh, together and how to 
make people understand where are the different areas that he is presenting. And then last but not least, the flow. Flow is basically how you want to tell your story. So it's the storytelling, as we said before, you know, if you want to uh, interact, so, you know, present, then put a question, pose a question, interact, have a quest, an answer, and then go on. Or you want to make, you know, a plenary session without interaction with anyone. Uh, or if you want to put, you know, the first uh, image and then all the other pieces of the next images or everything in one that will appear. So this is the flow of your presentation. So uh, being a graphic designer, uh, I think, uh, you know, the logo design is one of the things that really uh, engage uh, the visual thinking. So I remember on the old age, uh, I, when I was a young graphic designer, I used to go to sleep and then in the morning, like at three o'clock, I was coming up because I had to do this logo. So I had a lot of concept that I had to visualize in a single graphical element. And I was waking up, I said, oh, this is, this is it. I had the idea. And then I, fall, I was falling to sleep. I was waking up in the morning again and I forgot everything. So in the new days, now that I'm older also, if I wake up at three o'clock with something in mind, I just stand up from the bed, I take a piece of paper, I put it down, even if it's you know, just a sketchy thing, but that I will remember in the morning. And uh, going back to the project that we are doing and, uh, that is about uh, fishing gear, and this was uh, a logo, and the project is called Glaucos. So this was, uh, we are building a bio-based fishing gear or textile for t-shirts and this has to be biodegradable so if you you know lose your uh, uh, your fishing gear in the water it will be you know biodegradable so it will go out and so this was the logo so it, you see a leaf that is uh, basically uh, let's say the bio can, nature that transforms in the net but the net can also be uh, the textile if you see it on the microscope. And so this is just a very fast case study about a, a logo that we have done. I don't want to lose uh, more time about this. And then I pass to Selenia that will uh, bring you another case study. Uh, yes, the, the other case study that we want to show you is about architecture. Um, since I'm an architect, so how to apply visual thinking also in architecture and interior design. Here you can see this diagram, which is related to uh, the Mebius House, um, a project designed by UN Studio. And this is um, an example um, on how to transform uh, housing needs into a 24 hour cycle of sleeping, working and living. And so this uh, diagram guides also the spatial, spatial organization of the building itself. So this is also an example of uh, how to uh, visualize a complex idea on how two entities sharing um, you know, a common space in a, a shared house and how their um, trajectories um, during uh, their um, home activities running during the days can also be materialized into um, a building construction. And this, um, this diagram so integrates uh, the architecture program, the circulation, and the architectural structure itself. Thank you, Selenia. So now let's go visual. So now we want you to participate to something. So we want to give you an assignment to see what, what will come out. This is an experiment. Eh? So you are, <laughs> you are part of the experiment. So we would like that you um, Pick a concept uh, of uh, your product, your service, uh, your company, whatever. You know, I don't want to be strict on that because uh, uh, we, we, we thought at the beginning to use a unique selling proposition, but it was too complex, especially because you are in a context that is very difficult. But we would like to also uh, really to tell you, you know, take a concept uh, from your work and we would like, and now here we make the difficult part. We want you to enter in Miro and you will find this uh, canvas basically. Let me show you. Okay. 
Okay. So let me share my screen. That should be this one. Do you see it? Okay. I guess I, I put already the link. So basically, the difficult part is that uh, in this canvas that you see, you have this, uh, um, let's say, geometrical uh, figures, but they are not a rectangle or a circle. They are strange figures. You can see something from them. I mean, for example, for this one, I see a butterfly maybe. So if I want to do something you know, with a butterfly, I just put it here, some of them. I can, of course, uh, uh, rotate them. I can scale them if I want to make it smaller. I can make connectors also from here. So I can connect this one to this one, for example. OK. Uh, but I don't want to, uh, to give you any hint. I just want to tell you, go here, think about something. It can be even NGI uh, points, I don't know, trust or whatever, or something about your, uh, your project or your service, and try to visualize and represent an artifact that represents this, uh, this point. So we will not ask you at the end when you finish this, and we will ask the participant what they see in. And let's see if you uh, were able to, uh, to describe this visually, okay? So uh, we will give you, I would say 20 minutes maybe, because probably you have five minutes to think, you know, what you could be something in your, you know, uh, daily life that you would like to show. And, uh, and then we will give you 15 minutes to do it, okay? Ideally, you can, uh, if we want then to connect with the next exercise, probably could be nice to, start from the main, uh, the, the keyword of your activity, of your project. So uh, try to do this, otherwise you can use other things, but maybe this could be a good starting point. No, uh, don't share, don't write, because then we will have to guess what you are talking about. So everybody can enter that place, is in the chat, the link. And there are uh, 32, I think, uh, 32 um, canvas. You can put your name close to the canvas so nobody else will touch it. So you, you, you select a canvas and you put your name and then start. I will, I will put the timer. Writing. So we have yep. 20. Is this 20? Yes. Any question? Okay, <laughs> here we are. So I'm sharing. I saw. I'm first. I didn't see a lot of participation. I have to say, yeah, you you were too scared. I don't know why. There is no a jury, yeah. <laughs> but I saw Mirko. Mirko, you are my hero. I saw me Mirko that did a fantastic artifact. I have to say, yeah, that I think is this one. Mirko, so don't say what, uh, what is it? <laughs> Let's ask to the other participants. So what do you see in this uh, drawing? What do you think he wanted to uh, convey as message? Anyone? Look after. I, okay, go ahead. Look after the environment. I, I, I think on the left side, it is the positive world of um, a network or something like working together. On the right side, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, the bad world where it is um, not working uh, like it should. Something like, um, yeah, best and worst uh, examples of collaboration, something. That's, that's my association with it. Okay, some other idea? So if I can go next, mm -hmm. go ahead. I don't know why I see seasons. I see <laughs> a season like uh, spring, summer, 
blossoming. And then I see another season, which is not necessarily a season, more like uh, it, something happened to that forest and something's changed. The, the tree evolved. The, the, mm -hmm. Some tree fell, some more got organized, adapted to the new weather, to the new conditions. Um, but still, I see hope because both trees have the same foundation, um, mm -hmm. the same start. And that would be it. Mm -hmm. Any other idea? Um, I can share a few thoughts if it's okay. Yeah. Hello. Um, well, like there's two versions of it to actually elaborate a bit more about the tree. So yeah, it's a nice, it's a blossoming tree and the um, right side, the tree has been destroyed some sort. I don't know, taken in consideration global warming, maybe it relates to that or something like this, excessive emissions, blah, blah, blah. Or it's a um, bouquet of flowers that's very nice blossoming and some sort of a dead flowers on the other side. My versions of it. Okay. So the answer is Mirko. What yeah. was what was I mean? There, there was some some of them that uh, get some points. Uh, the first one. Yeah, they, they, they got the point basically because I, I tried to uh, present trees mm -hmm. that, that have the same foundation and, and, I, and I got that from your data structure in the presentation, as you mentioned, yeah. data as a tree. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wanted to present a project that is examining the data of two companies that are growing as a tree, as a company has its foundation and start and it needs to blossom. So on the left, we have a company that has a blossom that has fruits. These are these, uh, I would say, round ones. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, we, on, the, on, the, on the right side, we just see the branches that are not developed properly. So both sides have branches, but on the right, there's something wrong. And we as a company are trying to uh, pinpoint and find companies that are doing good, that, that are growing properly in uh, also as 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 other mentioned, in, in, in a sustainable uh, way. And we want to water them down with rain, which is investment. And in, ah. that, in that sense, that is something That's that, cool. that, we are, that the company are providing and providing security for investors as they can back down and not water ones that are not growing and doing proper things. So that is... That was the, the, the idea. You know, Mirko, you are definitely a visual thinker. <laughs> I mean, I think this was great. I mean, you okay. thought, and I mean, the, the difficulty, of course, of this, uh, of this uh, exercise is that, uh, you know, you can't draw. You just have to use what is there. So you have to stretch your brain as much as possible and try to, you know, come up, uh, combining all these elements to come up with some, uh, you know, some stories or something. And uh, I think this was uh, was great. I mean, this uh, you're doing. Then there was another one. I don't know if it was one of us or this one here. Who did this? Um, it's me. My name is Anton. Anton and, Zakharov. Okay. So, what do you guys see? Don't, don't say yeah. Don't say anything. We have to wait for uh, for uh, the participants. So, what do you see here? Any, anyone? But for sure we see a boat mm -hmm. and uh, we see someone that is fishing something. And- or, or I can see a satellite maybe. But also, yes, there is a the kind of uh, uh, smart uh, fishing systems yeah. Using maybe a satellite, satellite that, that uh, can provide information provides information for sustainable fishing. Any other interpretation? So, so this is interesting. If if you allow me to share something, yeah. um, I I teach a course called Applied Innovation Engineering, 
um, for engineering students here in Denmark. And one of the three theories that I present to them, it's uh, related to constructivism, how we do things and take decisions based on certain events and past experiences and so on that are actually influencing a lot um, the choice of projects and whatever we'll, we're doing right now. And what I see in the picture, sure, there is um, the, the ship, but I also see a, a very particular type of, uh, of bed for kids, uh, newly born kids, which is actually um, used to be very popular in Albania, where I come from. And I see it as if this bed, it's becoming more uh, digital or connected with some IoT device so that you can monitor the baby uh, when, when they are sleeping and maybe not just monitor like as a camera, but also check uh, temperature and humidity level and other um, other sort of uh, metrics that it's possible um, over there and maybe also this bed it's uh, waterproof in some sort of way and I link that to my past because I've done a project with the leakage detection systems and uh, valves for a manufacturing company here and uh, kits with asthma were 80% of the cases coming from water leakage at homes and, and uh, uh, damp in their beds and their rooms. So this is how I see it uh, right now. Yeah, good, co good contribution to two totally different uh, things. Any other idea? Uh, I, can, I, can, I can think of, 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 of different, different type of approach because I would say that, uh, that that ship is in front of me is bigger. So it's closer to me right now. And I would consider that as a source of the data and processing the data from the sea and transferring that data to the data center that extracts and gather uh, and, and, mm -hmm. and present a lot of information from, from that. So I would think that, uh, as you mentioned, the proximity that the, the, mm -hmm. the, the ship is where this information is going and then it's sending the data through the some kind of connection, what is the case, and then processing in some hidden parts getting multiple results. So that's how I see it, I, I don't know. So now the word to the, to the artist. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic, thank you very much. Uh, well, um, Susanna, Louise and Mirka, you're, you're spot on. Uh, this is a vessel digitalization that was a satellite that transmit the, the data and the data arrives ashore that then utilized for decision making. So it's a um, vessel digitalization, not, not specifically for the fisheries, but the whole merchant fleet, in fact. Great. Well, well in, be, in between the two, in between uh, the first and the third, uh, but in any case, but was you were nice. Good. Uh, you were pretty good to explain it in, uh, you know, with this with these pieces. Imagine if you present this to, to an audience. Okay, this is a drawing. What do you see here? This is what we do. Okay, this can be interesting. This is new. It's something that people don't see, you know, because so this is just to show you, you know, the way how you can be so visual thinker and how can you can use your visual thinking to, to create something different, original. By the way, uh, we already uh, pop up with also some interesting ideas. I mean, this question of monitoring the babies, the question of having a kind of a city, not citizen science, but rather something like this diffuse science and data collection and management. Uh, so, I mean, it, it is also a good way to uh, find the new ideas without uh, planning. And uh, so, this was but this is mine. No, let's leave yeah, it to mine. Somebody, yeah, this was mine. And uh, there is somebody else. In, uh, that uh, you see this. this one. Yes, this, this one. Uh, Selenia, this is you or some, somebody else? No, it, it's me, Peter. Okay, Peter. All right. So what do you see here in Peter drawing? This is much complex. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is kind of... Uh, this is kind of, um, well, really at the point, I guess, because there is not a lot of things around. It seems an interface of something. And, and what is interesting is the fact that all the elements are different. 
So the, the concept of diversity should be embedded somehow. And, and then there are the three elements on the right that are not part, but kind of connected with this. But there is a central part that probably is the most important maybe in the other four that go around. So I guess, uh, let's say the central part, probably this one is maybe is the most important, but then they are all connected. Yeah, the central part provides information. Any other idea? Anton, Mirko, Serena. Um, I would say based on based on uh, what Selenia mentioned about the architectural view before, I will see that I, I'll, I'm probably influenced. I'll see that as a concept of life when you have four dimension, dimensions and you, you, you need to include the, the three new uh, types, the new, new three dimensions into your life and, and some, something like that. Not life, maybe project. Some, something like that. I don't have any other clues, right? Serena? So I'm actually thinking. Uh, <laughs> we are all thinking. <laughs> exactly. So uh, there is some sort of modularity between these places, uh, these icons. They, they provide something. They exchange something with one another. I don't know why I read uh, love, <laughs> L-O-V, with the digit on the corner. Maybe because I just recently got engaged. <laughs> so I see the hearts yeah. everywhere and uh, connection. So, but I also see something related to art. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. Yes, art, uh, creativity, but also something. Yep. So the artist, tell us the mystery. The, the mystery is indeed, it's very complex. What I'm trying to, to show here is, is the, the, the value creation, which you get when you give consent, in this case, to DNA data, but it could be to any consented data. Um, and you do that by working together. So the center is indeed, like you see, it's a connection because it synthesizes four dimensions, basically. So one dimension is that of the consent holder. That's the, the, the person, us as a citizen, for instance, who have to give consent to say, yes, you are allowed to use my data for this purpose. The other one is the, what, what I see, the knowledge contributor. It could be a researcher, but also anybody who wants to contribute or work with the data and uh, wants to contribute knowledge to it, basically. And then the, the bottom part, the third one is the data, which is separated uh, from the technology because the technology processes the data. But you need to combine all of these four dimensions and also people to create value with it. Uh, and that's on the right part. What comes out of it is the value creation when you combine these four elements in a synthetic way. And indeed you get all kinds of different options because you can also combine them in, in a lot of different ways because the whole model in the future, I believe will be decentral and will indeed work uh, like in the other pictures, like, like, a, like a network. It will develop also like a network. And that is what, uh, yeah, what uh, I need to, to, to uh, <laughs> explain how to orchestrate the environment to, to make that possible. Yeah, it is pretty complex to, uh, to yeah. explain with a visual, I have to say. Yeah, but we yes. got, I mean, we got the, the key points and also yeah. the central element, the four different, uh, let's say, contributors to the full picture. The, the love question? <laughs> what is... Well, that's nice because it's a coincidence. But basically what you see is that the products that come out of it which we can value as, as, as people and as society are a lot of different uh, biodiverse uh, uh, solutions, basically, because you keep on uh, combining and recombining them, which uh, yeah, create value to the, to the society. So finally, there is the love somehow. Yes. <laughs> the love dimension. Okay. Uh... 
I guess uh, we have everything, right? No, no, this one. Wow. Who's the owner of this, Michael? Michael. Michael. Hmm. Yes, apologies for the drawing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Everything is fine. So, uh, so I, uh, I see a person here, I guess, that is on a tower somehow. And this is, uh, I see it as a elastic uh, uh, carpet. But it jumps and it goes in the house. It jumps, it goes up in a rocket. <laughs> this is what I see. <laughs> the first impression. <laughs> I see stars here and a moon. This is what I see. In any case, it has uh, some dimension of uh, fun and leisure, but maybe it's just because imagine this, we imagine this, or this is simply a database in which the data are stored and then they go back to something else. Because Any other? The user, yeah. anyway, this is yes, the this user. is the user. Is we, the user. We agree that this is the user. This is a house, I think. Yes. And, and this can be a satellite or can be something. An extra, an alien. Like <laughs> okay, any other idea? I, I got reminded of when we were uh, in second, third grade and learning English and we would say, this is a pen and the pen is on the table. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know why I see a, a, a system so the house is getting electricity or some energy sources and a solar panel, maybe a, a tower, maybe a wind turbine um, from, yeah, from the tower on the side. Mm. Any other dimension? Yeah. Anybody would like to contribute? No, Mirko. I, I, I would, uh, for example, I will see that as a person uh, joining some kind of some kind of uh, uh, startup hub or something like that for the first time that can propel that person into the space in a rocket ship through their uh, own entrepreneurship journey, or they can find their place there as they will stay in that. Uh, in that, uh, I would say, innovation world, so and find their home there. So that's the association that I that I had as some kind of some kind of innovation hub or some center. Michael, give us the answer. I joined about <laughs> six years ago, something like that. Yeah, it's great. Mike, Michael. Yes, very close. Well, well done. Uh, I, I, the drawing wasn't up to quality, but uh, again, it's it's the idea that. Um, if you think of NGI Atlantic, it's it's building this, if you like, a trampoline or a platform that you can use either to shoot for the stars or get your ideas uh, on further, or as you say, is a, a safe place where you can, even if if you don't uh, get into the rocket ship, you you have a safe house that you have somewhere then that you can go to, and it's it's the idea that the experimenters on the left hand side, but they have to do the jump, but we make the platform to put them into a nice place. Hopefully, that's nice. Uh, I, I really I really think that, that it's like picture great because it was my, my, my first cool, impression. Yeah. It is. It's great. Bravo, Michael. <laughs> yeah, I think that all all yes. the paintings had an one, two, three elements that were conveying the core message. And of course, we, we are not here to I mean, to, to uh, create artists, but rather to convey messages. I mean, the, the entire package was about this. And therefore, I think we, we succeed in, uh, we all succeed in our objective of today of uh, reflecting a little bit uh, more on how we can uh, think and structure our ideas or our thoughts in a visual way and how this can help us in working alone in working in teams and then in communicating to third parties our concept. I think we have to close uh, now because it's uh, six o'clock. 
So I hope you learned something or at least you have something to think about in the close future. This was amazing. I think that all the presentations I will remember and, 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 and that, that, is, that is really, really, really not, not, not strange, but you guys are right. It's <laughs> I thought that I'm good in numbers. I'm good in numbers. <laughs> Well, this was the this was the goal of the of the webinar. I mean, to uh, uh, we could stay here more, but uh, you know, it's it's six o'clock. I think we we have to to stop here, and uh, and we are happy that uh, you appreciate the the webinar. And uh, so I will I would stop here for now. And of course, you will find uh, this uh, uh, video, the presentation, and everything in the Tetra.